Чижову. Вот, спасибо Чижову. Единственное выступление было, которое было, ну так, ну не единственное, конечно, Климов тоже по существу, но которое существенно, касается существенных вопросов. Боб, you, sorry, sorry, you are waiting so much time, you, 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 your line now, your, your, your flow now, please put your question. Or no question, your comment, please. Okay, so I, I don't know what I'm allowed to do here, but I was I had some questions for uh, Alexander Shishkin. However, um, I see the protest by um, Anatoly Klimov about lack of experimentation, and I, I have so much experimentation to share, and I, I would love to share some of it um, uh, because I want your opinion as a group. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I have a couple of comments on Alexander Shishkin's work. So the first is he, he discussed laser light guiding of clusters. And this is something that not with lasers, but with light, um, Hutchison and Shoulders apparently did. Um, I want to ask him what his, um, if he can expand on the mechanism for the guiding of the clusters with laser light. Bob, uh, Shishkin is now here. Okay. First, second, second, he uh, he doesn't speak English, unfortunately. And I, I will translate, explain for him your questions. Okay. And maybe next time he will do your for you uh, for us his comment on on your question. Okay. Can, can I can I share a couple of observations that I've had? Yeah, in yes. 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 You can. Okay. So, um, but just, uh, Bob, 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 may I ask you, uh, is it right? Uh, I, right, I my my understanding of your previous uh, of your beginning of your speech that you are part you personally you are part of some some community European community and you it's difficult for you to share with us some details of your experiment. So or it's wrong understanding of your explanation. No, there's a couple of very specific observations I would like to share with you. Uh -huh. and, okay, 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 okay. Share, share, please. Okay. So, switch, switch on your, your screen. Uh, yes. So, so switch, switch on your, your screen. Uh, yes. So can you see that now? Yes, we, we see, we see. But, okay. And Bob, very clear, very shortly, very understandable for us. Please, yes. Your, your comment. Uh -huh. So, the, the the image on your screen um, is from an experiment, and it, this is a copper tube. I think it's about 15 millimeters, and there's an iron plate that you see in the background, and then there was an iron plate underneath this tube. And in the video, we observed ball lightning being produced, and it, it removes this spherical section or hemispherical section from the copper pipe. OK, and mm -hmm. it's not melted at all. It's just disappeared. Um, and the interesting thing is when you look at the boundary layer of this, uh, it looks like this. And if you zoom in further, uh, it looks like this. Uh -huh. And it's it's not melted. There are uh, two. This, this is part of this tube very near to the area disappeared in the so in, it is in this, this is the this whole section has disappeared uh -huh. it's not melted it's disappeared uh -huh. and, on, and on the and boundary, what, what, what about temperature during the disappearance it's, it's not possible to determine but we know that it's below 1089 degrees centigrade because the copper didn't melt at all it's disappeared uh -huh. It it can't right. it can't to be melted because the temperature is uh, is is low at that moment. Well, it, it, you you have this very very thin piece of copper here, and it goes to a point, and it's not it's not melted at all. It's it's just cut here, and it's not cut here. So I, let me show you the boundary. So uh -huh. on, on this boundary, you have this area here, and when you zoom into the boundary, you have these. Uh, uh, octagonal or hexagonal sections cut out and they are orthogonal to each other. And you have one here that's pointing towards the screen and the one that's pointing in the plane of the screen and then one that's pointing to the, towards the screen. 
So it's like an interwoven mesh of pointing vectors that I believe is on the, the skin of the ball lightning. Uh, and, and in here, this is, if this, the scale is of these holes that you're seeing where I'm putting my mouse is about uh, 400 nanometers. Okay, the overall structure here is uh, a, a number of microns, typical uh, um, exotic vacuum object scales. And there's no damage to the material around here. Okay, so it's, it's a mesh of interwoven, would look like flux loops that is on the boundary. Now, we also saw a, a torus at this point, and the torus looks like this. And the inside skin is practically just a few atoms of copper. And then it has this mesh of these twisted pairs coming out that as they go out further, they end up being larger twisted pairs. And this inside boundary is pure iron, and it's a micron thick. And we, we observe this in split spheres that we see also. Uh, so it has 100% pure iron. And then in between these pure iron braids, we have just silicon and aluminium. So this is another feature on this structure. So you can see the analysis here and so forth. So I have, this is what we produced in a wide range of Lena systems. I, I gave this presentation to you in Sochi, Sochi, no, not this one, uh, mm -hmm. uh, this one, and suggested that this was, okay, this structure may be the structure of ball lightning. And if you take a, some pointing vectors and you build a mesh from those pointing vectors and mesh them like this, you can end up with something on the surface of a sphere that would produce the structure. And we have seen these spheres, um, if I can find it. So we, we have, this structure is a micron thick. And then we have also seen in an ultrasonic system, um, if I can find it uh, here, this structure is a micron thick. And then we have also seen in an ultrasonic system, um, if I can find it uh, here, these structures. And th this is a mixture of iron and, and silicon uh, uh, and um, carbon. But we've actually got a split one of these where you see it's a hollow sphere and it's pure iron on this same, so you have toroids of a pure iron boundary and a sphere of a pure iron boundary with this uh, kind of structure on the outside. A small question for, for the understanding. Uh, uh, what the uh, 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 composition of the initial uh, cuprum uh, sample? It's uh, what's the... Там же, Толя, у него железо и этот самый, и, и медь. Вот он из него строит. Не, не, и не, еще, не, не, еще не, не, этот не. самый. Не, не, железо у него не там. Сейчас посмотрим, сколько у него железа. Вот да там силикон, и... кремний это значит. Вот этот самый. Вот из за концентрацион of the iron in the initial. There, there is iron in the reactor, that's not the point. There's no iron or very little iron in the ultrasonic system. And we produce these crenelated iron spheres in a microwave plasma reactor, in natural ball lightning from Hestalen impact, uh, in, in um, plasmoid, sorry, in ultrasonics and also in our Vega reactor. Uh, it doesn't matter which system we use, we produce these exact form structures up to about 40 or 50 micron. They tend to be smaller from about two to three micron up. In one example, in an ultrasonic system, we actually managed to break one of these along its triangular type sections. And you're gonna see that in a second. Anyway, I don't, I don't want to dwell on this too much because I, I have another important finding that I, I want your opinion on. Bob, Bob, Bob yeah. what do you think about the possible transmutation of the uh, initial cuprum to the iron and the silicon? And the I, I think it does not matter what you give this system, it will always make iron on this coherent layer, which appears to be these uh, mesh of pointing vectors. Okay. Uh, in, and, okay. and, 
uh, please uh, send uh, uh, for our uh, uh, Community. This, this presentation, this, this send, video, send video. please to, 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 to Klimov. Uh, uh, okay, so, so yeah, that's one finding. I have this other finding where this is in the uh, Lion reactor. And for many years, I had been referring to these marks on the outside of the Lion reactor, um, which were these um, kind of uh, uh, vortex marks. Well, I had an opportunity last week to look at the line reactor again, and I'd always been saying they, they were coming from the inside of the reactor out. And in this case, um, when, we, when we look at this structure up here, um, it, it has, it, it, the overall structure is, is a vortex, but it's cut through uh, as if it was in, in the surface plane. You have this kind of liquidized copper here. This is smashed up co uh, cupric oxide and then cuprous oxide, but here is the cutter. And the cutter contains carbon from the nickel diamond uh, uh, cores, but it also contains nickel. And there's no nickel in any other part of the reactor. So I remember visiting um, uh, Sergei Godin's lab uh, in uh, 2015, and he showed me this uh, al uh, alumina cylinder, which he'd done Parkamore fuel in at the time, and it had all these holes in, and he didn't understand, or at least that was what I was told, why all these holes were leaking hydrogen, and he could set light to them. Well, I believe this is an exotic vacuum object, or whatever you like to call it, an ecton, a, a ball lightning, micro ball lightning. You're seeing the structure here, and this is actually a vortical thing. I do not believe the thing is spinning. I think it is spinning the material around it. It's, in it's affecting the material. And so it went from the inside of the reactor in here through through the copper and it etched the inside of the the um, reactor like this so this is the inside of the quartz of the reactor and i've seen these structures many many times and also there is a structure on the sun from the european space agency and they call it a solar flare a proton flare and it's exactly the same structure this is scale invariant and so this is the mark and what you have is you have the vortex core coming through the center here and it comes around to the side out and sprays. And you actually have one torus here and one torus here. Uh, th th this is a, uh, like a slice through it. And if you, you see how it overlays, I don't know if you can see that, but, um, and then you have the element, the element compounds that are transported from the core, if it's gonna show it um, here. This, it's like a, a, a trefoil. You've got a structure here, structure here, structure here, and this is carbon. But also we have nickel, and there's only nickel fragments around this cutter that's come through, this section of this cutter that's come through the core. And in X-rays, when we expose this reactor, we see these flux loops. Post the reactor running its experiment for days, we'll expose X-rays and leave these two spots on the X-rays. And this is one that's very, very close together, but they can go much further apart and the flux loop gets much, much larger and exposes the X-rays. So um, these, these are all structures of exotic vacuum objects in my view. Uh, I, I've shared many, many of them over the years. But to go back to the previous one, I believe that what we're seeing here um, is, is a magnetohydrodynamic effect self-assembly. And we saw the same thing, exactly the same thing in, uh, in hydrodynamics in um, India in 2017. And you see this torus here that's produced in an ultrasonic system. And around the outside are regular positions. You have vortex pairs coming in and joining the large torus. So we have a vortex pair here, vortex pair here, vortex pair here, vortex pair here around the outside. And this is the same thing that we observe on this structure. And I've got these in 8K resolution. So each one of these is a vortex pair that's coming out from this torus. So we, we, we've identified three structures, a sphere, a torus, and capped tube. So it's like, it's like a, a sphere, but you stretch the middle, and then networks of the same. Um, and they're compliant with Maxwell electrodynamics. Um, and uh, they produce uh, uh, these regular sort of hexagonal and pentagonal arrays in the Vega Valley. Um, and you see the transmutation, but it, it, it's 
it, it, it's we see it like so here's here's the close up on the edge there and the, this is uh roughly one micron across for two um for a braid of two vortices that come into the outside pure iron core okay this is on aluminium foil that was run for 90 seconds at four, uh, 46 kilohertz. And you see the same formation of these micron style twisted structures. And because this acts like a diffraction grating, this is why I believe we can see strange radiation tracks using polarized filters on microscopes. They, they, they just pop out when, when the strange radiation track has interacted with metal. Um, and so you can see, I've got a couple of examples here. Again, so this is exactly the same scale as this. This is the rolling of the aluminium foil. This is the rolling of the aluminium foil. You can see this is the head of a crack and it's starting to cohere into this structure. And over here, it's already cohered and it's the same scale, these twisted vortical structures. And it's 100% on and 100% off. So you can see the zero effect here and instantaneously it's 100% effect. And this is the same here. And this is a twisted pair this, this is, our, in my view, a coherent matter structure that touched onto the aluminium and organized the matter instantaneously. And this, it, like I say, it's exactly the same dimensions here in aluminium as it is here in ion. And so th there's some of, some of the very many experimentalist, experimental findings that I can share, but the experiment to create this effect took 90 seconds. And it was a $35 experiment. And the biggest crenellated iron spheres we have produced, we have produced in less than one second, 1,000 seconds using an ultrasonic domestic cleaner. Uh, Bob, uh, yes. very, very large information for us. It's neat uh, detail information. And we, we hope to study your information uh, if you send us by email this uh, and uh, my question for you only uh, only small question for you uh, uh, bob yeah uh, you uh, sure that the uh, uh, whole creation is connected not the melting but uh, uh, maybe erosion process uh, on the, the surface of the I, I so if i if i load this model in here um but uh, but but uh why uh, this uh, process uh, not be uh, connected with the melting of the cuprum um well so um if you look at matsumoto and Solin, both of them in the early 90s, and we've replicated this with HHO gas and, uh, and, and in the Vega experiment. These spheres, we've actually got them, part of the structure fails, the confinement structure, and out of it, it spews silicon and carbon confinement structure, and out of it, it spews silicon and carbon and other... Okay, fine, Jack, okay. All right, okay, all right. <laughs> He's broken the tap. <laughs> it's my son. <laughs> no, not now. Just not now. So in in um, Matsumoto's um, work, I, uh, Bob, he, I know this. A, uh, I know know this work. Uh, 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 so uh, what I'm what I'm saying is, if I load this object up, I, I want to explain. It, it's 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 rather trivial to explain these systems uh, when when you you see this. Just say one one more thing, one more yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. continue, so, but but go go to the end of your of your. Okay, comment. so I I'm suggesting that this completely homogeneous pure iron structure is these pointing vectors, which are intensely magnetic fields that form a mesh, which can mesh any sphere, torus or or tube with capped ends, as Solin identified, and so forth. And what happens is. This consumes matter uh, as, as the, 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 the um, sphere expands and it consumes matter and you can see exactly how it's consuming the matter in this image here, where it is eating these uh, circular sections. And this is not melted, this is disrupted. 
And what I'm saying is, is because we know that these tori can move material atoms around them, that when it forms into this mesh that can, that, oh God, it's gone again, excuse me. When it forms this mesh, um, на самом деле он переходит от одного кольца тороидального к системе и говорит, что это вот отпечаток от этой системы. Пусть он, пусть он закончит. Подожди, не надо. Подожди. Some of the material is swept inside, and in the process, it goes through this incredible magnetic flux, which adds to the size. So it's like an event horizon. It consumes matter and it grows. And it, what nucleons go in end up as iron, but some go get forced into the center. And in the center, they get transmuted into other elements. And periodically, one of these sections will break and it will spew out carbon, predominantly protons, helium, silicon, all of the elements that have been observed by all of these different authors. But you always predominantly get a lot of iron uh, if you push this system hard. Now the torus, We've observed all of these tori, which are tori of tori. So it, they, I, I, it's, these, this, this is a subsection of one larger torus, and there's the subsection of the torus, okay? This is how it manifests itself. Um, and we, we've seen a wide range of them. These are all nearly pure calcium. So the torus structures are calcium, And then when you get them blown up in relation to a, a, an overall ball lightning structure, I think I might have it here. Um, we've, we've got this whole ball lightning structure that, that blew up. It has the iron sphere, then the silicon and carbons everywhere. It's like a big splodge of carbon. It has silicon. And then on the outside, it has this calcium. And so I don't know whether the configuration is this torus of which ends up as calcium carbon everywhere and then this iron cluster in the middle um, and so i'm just trying to work it out but i i want people to maybe think about this uh and we've observed this this is on the outside of the hutchison effect it's the same thing occurring this is this is a mesh of evos this is on the lion reactor and i shared this in sochi in 2018 So this is almost the inverse. Rather than the ball lightning that is a sphere moving out, consuming matter, and, and, and basically turning a lot of it into iron, but a lot of it into lower order nuclei, you can also get this, these meshes to mesh over, this is quartz and this is aluminium. So it literally can wrap, wrap around the surface. So th those, those are some of the observations. And, and when it wraps around the surface, it completely protects it. So yeah. for us, it's uh, very much information. Yeah, uh, I, maybe, I understand. Maybe I, 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 I translate, uh, uh, I, saw, I, I would like to tell some words for, for the Russian uh, colleagues. Yeah. yeah. And what то, что я понял, может быть, меня Валерий Николаевич поправит, значит, что он видит? Он видит там интересные структуры на поверхности вот этих вот мишеней, причем структуры состоят, действительно, как-то элементы разъединены. То есть есть внутренность Тора, значит, состоящая из кальция, к примеру, а вокруг расположен углерод там, или там железо. То есть вот все-таки вопрос, о тот, о том, тот вопрос, о котором мы задавали, а как же равномерно распределены вот эти транспортированные элементы, он здесь вот рельефно задает, спрашивает. Мы видим вот области, где почему-то есть железо, где почему-то есть кальций, они отделены друг от друга, так сказать, они как-то вот, так сказать, ну, украшают, дополняют друг друга, так сказать. Вот в виде его этих, значит, ну, а дальше он начинает фантазии по поводу вихревых колец, из которых может соткать, соткать такой ковер, что ли, так сказать, некую структуру, которая, ну, если наложить ее на, на образец, она отставит, оставит вот такие следы. Все, Боб, thank you very much. And, uh, okay. uh, and, uh, uh, it's very interesting information, and we, uh, uh, I'm, uh, will, uh, shall, uh, 
very glad to uh, study your uh, new and, well I, in, in part i wanted to share this with you because i sat next to you in sochi after the conference and you said you were observing a lot of hollow spheres in your reactor okay, okay. thank you very much yeah okay thank you